Welcome everybody, this is your strategy wolf and welcome back to Victoria 3, our Japanese Empire, Emperor Meiji and welcome back to the beginning of the second Russo-Japanese War or can we call it the First World War already? Not just because of the um, yeah, similarity in time, we are in March 1915, but also we do have uh, Austria-Hungary this time on our side fighting here a second front whilst once again the British, despite uh, improved relations with them, uh, randomly joined in again. I guess it's just the British uh, yeah, jealousy for us taking over the first place in the world and our efforts to try to make it a more Japan-centric uh, world, here, especially here in eastern parts of the world in Asia. And yeah, we are at the very outbreak here, March the 5th, and the uh, armies are assembling. And we shall see how we can <laughs> deal it this time. I hope this will be not a humiliation again. We increased our taxes already to a higher level so we can afford the war efforts. We haven't um, really yeah, mobilized our reserve or conscripts yet. But however, we increased our troop size a lot in comparison to the time before. So we are just nominal, nominally 200 battalions below the Russians. But we are on a high... Uh, far higher level we do have squad infantry and mo uh, we motorized vehicles and so on so we're hopefully gonna take over and so somehow the russians focused all their troops on the austro-hungarian front which hopefully will help us like breaking through quickly here in manchuria um, also with another landing maneuver we started on top we left some army troops uh, in Japan since uh, last time we had the problem that, that they just landed in Japan. Now we have 110 battalions over here as a reserve and I think this should be enough to like fend off any bigger invasions which hopefully can be prevented by the Navy as well but as we saw last time it is hard. The Brits, however, are focusing their troops down here where we just have a delaying force of 12 battalions. Last time this worked pretty long, I don't know. We shall see how it goes, but the focus lies absolutely down uh, up here in Manchuria, taking both over both uh, outer and uh, southern Manchuria. Best case, we can start also a small invasion to Alaska, and therefore like meeting the war goals and hopefully getting up in the war. Um, yeah. Points. And I don't want to talk too much about it anymore, so let's just basically hear out the war goals we have in mind. Basically, it's about southern, outer Manchuria, and as a little bonus, we were thinking about Alaska as well. And yeah, they just want to humiliate the Austro-Hungarians, which is fine, and reparations again. So worst case, we're going to pay Russia, but this time it is to avoid. Uh, over here we see, yeah, really 700 red. How many can the Austrians feel? 200, yeah. So I hope they will not be overrun, like, immediately, since the Russians feel the main bulk of their army over here. Yeah, or even some Englishmen here, over here. Yeah, let's go on a level 3 and see what's happening and if we can overcome the defensive here in Manchuria at least very quickly which would be very much helpful okay and we're improving relations with the French is gone um, yeah, I mean in the, at the moment once we're in the game there's nobody else is going to join in however yeah rather improve with some relations yeah the Germans once again dropped us they were also in the alliance in the beginning Okay, here we see the first attack by the Brits. Regular troops. Okay, okay, okay. Why the hell can they... Well, it's just so many more. Seems like southern China is hard to defend. But it's okay for the moment. We will lose a lot of uh, agricultural income. But okay, at least with our by far um, a huge advantage in numbers or um, numerical superiority. It's gonna be... Yeah, this looks pretty uh, promising here in terms of a breakthrough. When can we expect our naval landing in 27 days? So we will have a second front also up here. How are the Austrians doing here in Galicia? Oh, nice. Looks like despite their inferiority here, they still have lots of troops and good defensive so they can hold them off. Yeah, here in southern China in Guangdong, the Brits are probably going to break through at some point. But it's about us being quicker against the Russians. And see, they're, they're, they're getting their supplies with, with cartridges and carried by oxes. Do we have at least one uh, flex about this? Do we have a railway to the front here? Oh, actually not the whole stuff. So it's normal. Oh, we don't have railways in Shenzhen. <laughs> okay. 
So this is still like a very underdeveloped area. So let's hope we can bring uh, railways and everything soon here as well. All right, what we do we have here? Hostile enemy, ooh, East China Sea. South China, East China Sea. So the Brits are sinking our convoys down here. All right. Do we have any measures to prevent this from happening? Um, naval invasion escorting to England. Let's maybe make them escort to... Down here to Dainam. Maybe we can like see how big the raiding force is. If it's the, This is like 1500 convoys, oh gosh. Oh, and our naval invasion here was absolutely successful since apparently... There is no enemy forces here in the area. Maybe we'll bring over here some of these tinier troops also. Um, the Oceania, come on. Let's... And the standing by here, North China and the Oceanian troops. Yeah. Let's try this. That and Sometimes it branches out and I want to have more flexibility so this brings us some more commanders over here so we can overrun this very quickly. And here the breakthrough is also happening. How about the south? Um, okay, delaying the bridge still. At least we also sink some British convoys over here. Lovely. Oh gosh. Yeah, yeah, war is expensive. Is anything really going up quite high? Can we get some more coal from somewhere else? We'll take what we can get. Ammunition from the Germans, okay. I mean, we gotta import this probably. That's the. Well, maybe we have the access. Well, we can. We have to get some. Let's try to uh, at least limit or like try to fight a little bit against the um, excessive spending. But it's hard. I think we basically. Let's not export artillery in these cases to the Chinese. We just need it right now ourselves. Yeah, arms we can still export. Yeah. Well, not really doing too much over here. Korean market access being limited. Actually, it's also here in Jinjing. Maybe let's build a railway so we can. Actually, let's push this. Let's call it like military build up. So we have a better supply to the front lines with some railways here in Jinjing. First thing to build, but let's get out of the production menu and see what is going on over here. Come on, let's get them out of the way here. Oh, 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 nice. Big share actually of southern Manchuria already occupied. That's good to see. What do we have here? Um, on this front, the Russians being repelled at the, at the Galician front. That's very nice to see. The Brits are gonna break through, uh, through very fast. Here in the Sea of Japan, we still have. Indian Ocean, hostile, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Our hostile, uh, this is expected that the British Navy is going to take over. Last time we were beating the Brits, you know, on, on, on sea, but I don't want to, uh, I need my fleet basically here to uh, ensure that there's convoys running and protection to our troops here in uh, Manchuria. That's the most important part, so I will not change the naval strategy at the moment massively. Oh, what I will actually do. Oh, these guys here were kind of uh, successful at raiding. Okay, let's actually... Patrolling coast. Yeah, yeah, we need to defend the coast. That's so clear. So you are going to do actually now... Hmm... Oh gosh, I think I need an extra... An additional admiral. Since I want to split up the forces a little bit more. Um, which one do we want? Experienced commander is, sounds like very nice. Bandit. Yeah, him. Alright, where's he doing? Like, let's promote him a little bit. Alright, so we've got new tasks. We do have escorting convoys to Manchuria, that's fine. Escorting to Indochina. No, I wanted 
you to do the uh, yeah i want you to do the convoy escort down here and you guys the 20 ships are going to do a naval invasion in alaska where i don't expect too much resistance actually so i can take a quite small small force um let's actually try just with my oceanian troops that i yeah these eight battalions, I I don't know how Alaska looks like. Do we have uh, barracks over here? Not at all. So best case, there shouldn't be any uh, really resistance in Alaska. In 50 days, we just take it over quickly. Oh, and here we see a first naval battle versus the, the Russians. Oh, they also upgraded to dreadnoughts. Interesting. So the Russian Navy is also kind of up to date. But this looks great. This is what I wanted to see last time. Now we're breaking through from both sides quite quickly, taking over the Manchurias here. And the uh, war exhaustion of the Russians is going down way faster. So, guys, this is what we wanted to see now. Kind of, a, we, are, we are like three months in the war, and vast parts of the Manchurias already, especially the southern part, being occupied. This is the Japanese Blitzkrieg we all were waiting for. <laughs> Let's maybe cancel then the convoys to the Brits in the meantime, so we save some admin power and best case, uh, yeah, some convoys, which we're not really saving right now. It's gonna be interesting, and there's the connection, guys. Wonderful. <laughs> and even the Austrians sending reinforcements here. Um, we don't need to defend the front here, let's get full offensive and... Let them attack. That's it. And the others are going over here anyways to the landing. Yeah. This is gonna be... As long as there's no resistance, we're gonna try to go and take over as much as possible. Maybe... Actually, when we have so few resistance up here, I was too greedy. Maybe I can actually deploy some of the... Um, um, where's the war... Where can I see my troops? Not in the battle. Front are here. Maybe we can bring some guys. Do we have a defensive master? Offensive mountains. We can some bring some extra troops to the South China. Maybe him. Expert defensive. Or him. What? Masuyiro Yutoku. Alright, you guys. You go down here as an additional yeah, defense force. We need to delay this a little bit more. Because I'm really not sure what the extra 300 British battalions would do in case of a victory down here. Are they trying to do a landing? Do they uh, reinforce the Austrians here? Austrians are also not making any progress here. This looks really like um, World War One here tren entrenched probably. But the Russians with the double of the number still can't push through. Here we see... Oh god, what's this? Ah, nice. We are defeating another British fleet. Very good to see here. Here we're defeating a Russian fleet. Also good to see. Guys, I'm kind of... Uh, here we're sinking some. I mean, now still our convoy losses are big, but we can replace them after the war. And here's the... Oh yeah, we landed also here in, in Alaska with a tiny detachment. It shall be enough. Perfect. They will take over Alaska slowly. Hopefully increase our war score over here. And yeah. In the meantime, a lot of stuff is going on. Let's read this first. Commander commands civic coalition. Admiral Camillo has made public statements in support of Constitutional Reform Party, bringing into question the political neutrality of the military. It is my duty to defend the nation and its interests. Politics is as much a part of war as battles and logistics are. I don't see the problem with doing my duty and I doing what I can do make sure those who are best fit to protect the nation end up being the ones in charge. Alright, um, Grand Admiral, oh yeah, he's a really important one. Momentum, more of radicals, becomes a politician, no we need him in the war right now. But let's be honest, I don't mind the momentum, we're happy with those in charge, so they'll get some momentum. Beautiful. We need the, them right now. Around Japan, our navy proves to be superior. 
how long it's gonna take and in 18 days we get some reinforcements from these guys and against this okay the brits get reinforcements from from the finish apparently uh oh yeah the superiority is just overwhelming but still no reinforcements so i feel like the russian war plan is failing since they're still not withdrawing anybody, they're rather reinforcing here the Austrian front. Which is crazy. They don't even have a war goal on the Austrians. Once again, something where I would think if you... In reality, you see this battle over Galicia and even just imagine a Russia would, like, after thousands of losses over here, would win. Why wouldn't Galicia normally would be part of some... I would expect it to be part of some uh, this Galicia here, by the way. For those who are not sure what I'm talking about, not I'm talking about, but the Spanish one, uh, Galicia. So I would expect this to be under dispute at least. But it won't happen despite the over 200,000 dead already that were <laughs> fired out here in this, let's say, in a short time of... How long are they fighting since March? So just five months. Okay, and here we are... Apparently getting beaten up. Now reinforcements come a little bit too late. Getting split up here. Oh. Well, maybe we can defend, defend here the Hainan straight. But actually, worst case, we lose this. Worst case, we can even lose here our possessions here in Taiwan if necessary. As long as we hold our... Yeah. Hold basically up here Alaska as secondary. But as long as we hold Manchuria and as we hold Japan, this shouldn't be a problem. And look at that, we're making really big ground. We're almost at the point where you uh, occupy entirely the Outer Manchurias. The Outer Manchuria, not uh, the Outer Manchurias. Yeah, and also our troops, cut the, the bigger contingency we send, can't really withstand this massive British attack. I mean, their losses are also higher. All right, with Scandinavia we can't improve relations anymore. Um, Spanish I don't want. Let's go with the Americans maybe again. Oh, the Mexicans, why not? We're trading a lot. Alaska will be taken over very soon. Still no resistance from the Russians. Like this we can march, take over half, uh, the entire Siberia. I, after taking Alaska, maybe I will do another landing naval invasion here in Kamchatka just in case. And down here, yeah. We'll lose this one for the, in the meanwhile. A whistle stop tour. Um... Mitsue Kido intends to travel across Shikoku by train to campaign for the Imperial Rule Party. Oh, those are these kind of fascists, right? Yeah, they are. All I intend to do is present myself to the people. I'm just a simple man trying to get our party's message out by the best means available. Um, now we need the railway throughput. Oh, we can't really. Alright. Then just this, the smaller version. Actually, this one I can get off. Let's see if we have problems uh, now. No, it looks okay. Oh no, the Russians are bringing in 390 battalions suddenly, okay. It might be a little late since we took over the relevant parts. And this front, oh yeah, they, they released this front. By the way, it looks like it has Austria also mobilized their conscripts. What kind of army do they have actually? Mass conscription, okay. They do have peasant levies, while we fight with a professional army, right? And the Brits do fight with mass conscription as well. Alright, we have a little bit... Yeah. We have still a different kind of fighting wars. The mass conscription is probably what comes the closest to World War One standards. Mm. However, I'm a little bit surprised. When do they arrive here 40 days it still takes them a month minimum to arrive here at this front line should be enough hopefully to and here there's no reinforcements yeah should be hopefully enough to manage to take over the tiny leftover pieces 
our election. Oh yeah, this is not an event, just looking at it. Yeah, the reform party doing quite well. The imperial rule party are now with the kind of fascists or nationalists in the background of our war efforts here, probably being getting some extra momentum. And our four ships are quite effective here. Koichiru's uh, sinking here and there a couple of ships. That's nice to see. Another battle commencing. That's really great that we are probably taking up to this mountain ridge. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit embarrassed. I don't know how these are called. I've probably we've got the... Uh, no, not the Amur. Wait, which was the Amur? Not this one, right? This... Oh, guys, I've not... maybe this is the Amur? I think the Amur was once a border, a border river between Russia and China. I'm not sure if it's this one. Um, I've got to check it out on the map. Anyhow, these mountains look like a natural border obstacle that would be, uh, just from the style, let's say, a good uh, defensive line. Alright. Oh, what? Oh, Oh, okay, this is just a small force that's just being outnumbered by the Russians here. It happens. Absolutely no movement on the Austrian-Russian uh, front. Now we're getting here into the mountains. But looks like the first... Russian battalions really established themselves now here at really for, for real at the front line um, Let's come on close the gap here. Just take over these coastal provinces. This would be nice to shorten the front line And now we see that actually the first time us engaging here with the Russians and Actually, we are attacking with numerical inferiority however Trench, we have squad infantry versus trench infantry, we have our uh, um, shrapnel in, uh, artillery, we have um, motorized troops. MGs on both sides probably, so losses are, as you see, always high, surprise maneuver. Looks like with the newly arriving troops are still being overwhelmed by our uh, like experience and modernized troops. Yeah, here we're getting totally smashed despite <laughs> Austrian, <laughs> Austrian reinforcements. Yeah, next to Japan, we also beat down the uh, the Russian Navy easily. And here we're taking over Alaska slowly. But guys, look at this wonderful situation. The Russian war uh, support is going down from because we do control the war goals, I think. Base decay from exhaustion. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but it wouldn't go below zero if we could, wouldn't control the war goals. So, yeah, let's see. We want, want it all, what we asked for. And with a little bit of luck, this is gonna be done quite soon, hopefully, actually. Of course, we am happy to... Okay, if you want peace. The armed forces suggest a more hardline foreign policy towards Russia due to their poor relations. If half of what you're saying is true, I wouldn't want you to anywhere near the borders, she said. But I don't think it is. Mother, you've always said no, not to trust the Russian. Why would you trust them to respect our borders? No one wants their son to do it because they've known it's dangerous. That's exactly why we need to do it. Um, yeah. In the current political climate, of course, uh, we wouldn't really like trust the Russians to uh, um, respect borders. So, absolutely, we're going this way. Set aside political po polite formalities. They are the enemy. I mean, they literally are. Oh, sad. While this battle turn, tide of this battle is turning a little bit here. Um, yeah, we've got lost. Well, if we can hold this state, it's still fine here. We do beat up the Russian Navy once again. Also, this is running well. And we've got a new election. Yeah, and the Constitutional Reform Party doing extremely well. Um, I mean, we could also bring the nationalists in and still have a 100%. Actually, let's do that why not if we can at the moment i think the nationalist uh normally i'm not a big fan of the petit bourgeois but uh, i mean it just fits very well in this case 
Also not gonna change the laws, I think, or are we going to have a look? Let's have a quick look if there's anything to do. National Guard still it could be interesting. Or secret police. Um, actually, we could really use the... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Isn't there anything that helps with the... Ah, this is with the police force, with the unrest. That would have been nice. But we have the problem of secession maybe in the Chinese provinces. So... Let's try to enact the National Guard. The Hymen is marginalized anyway. The rest loves it. Yeah, it could be nice. And then with the, the bureaucracy shouldn't be a problem. We just build some more government buildings where we have a lag anyways in taxation, taxation capacity. Let's have a quick look and do that. Kyushu. And then we shall see if it's enough here in Chubu we're building anyways. Kansai. All right. Okay, we're 1916 now. Oh, the war is going fast. Um, oh, like almost a year of the war efforts gone. The navy is dominating the seas over here. The um, the front lines over here are being stable in e Europe, while Manchuria is almost taking over entirely. The Russian reinforcements stop us here a little bit at the borderline. And yeah, also Alaska is almost entirely taken over. <laughs> also here we find with Albert Bioti, uh, probably a Hungarian command Hungarian commander, yeah, of the Austro-Hungarian forces. In fighting in Alaska against nobody. Thanks for your support, love it Austrians. <laughs> All right, and down here, the Brits are still being delayed, but slowly kicking us out here from southern China. All right, and there's still there's also losses in our conways. However, our, somehow we seem to have compensated somehow, or just some trades are breaking down. I'm not 100% sure. But the market still looks okay, despite our um, cold problems. Yeah, we're also constructing, of course. In the meantime, I think there was a lot of electricity of uh, power plants that we built. So probably the yeah, the price of electricity reduced a lot recently. That's good to see. Fully today, I didn't really care about the power plants. But yeah, you see, we have now really big ones. Level 50 here twice. And when we once we got the access to the coal here in the Manchurias, hopefully... And, oh! The Russians are actually not stopping us over here. This was a this was like very intense skirmishes here in the mountain areas, but it looks like we're gonna break through in the end. What all what else happened? We've got the French starting something about against the Maghreb. I don't care right now. Mara also couldn't care less, and Oranje also couldn't care less. And we're in March again, so it's kind of a year of war. Let's wait for the result of this one. If it happens very soon, it should. <laughs> there is not so many people left here in this battle. That's how... Yeah, but... <laughs> both armies or army parts, army corps that are involved are very much decimated to their most extent. This was a very rough one in the winter and spring here in, in Manch North Manchuria. Does it lead to a bigger... Ex do we exploit the... I think we cut them off here now, finally. Anyhow, at the same time, we lost uh, southern China for the moment. This is stable. And I think now we we are... Like, April 1st, we are a, war, uh, blah, 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 a year into the war. So I think this is also the perfect um, point for to stop this episode today. So um, the end of the war is probably going to be... The next or in two episodes, we don't know. So tiny little cliffhanger. Um, however, this is a way more promising start than the last time. This is kind of how I expect the mechanics to work. I don't know where the difference is. Probably we have more troops and we do have an alliance partner in, in Europe, which distracts troops. Um, might be the two reasons why this worked out nicely this time. So we're still very, very hopeful. And we shall see if it really leads Japan to victory and how we're going to look after it. Um, I really hope you liked this one again. Uh, leave me a like and a subscription if you haven't yet. And let me know in the comments what you think and if you're happy with this start of the war. And yeah. Anyways, then see you next time with the end and the conclusion of the war. Um, bye. See you next time. Your Strategy Wolf.